Hi, I'm Billy Joe, and this book, Out of the Dust by Karen Hesse, is all about me from 1934 to 1935 during the Dust Bowl. So you're probably wondering why my name is Billy Joe, because that's a boy's name, and you're right. See, my mom and daddy thought that I was going to be a boy, not a red-haired, freckled-faced, long-legged girl like I am, and not the son that my daddy had hoped for. But there wasn't much that they could do about it, and so they loved me anyway. And at the time that I wrote this book, uh, my mom was pregnant, and she had gone through several miscarriages, um, but we were hoping that this was the one that would work out. And so in this book, I write journal entries in the form of free verse poems, and I talk about the families that struggled through the Dust Bowl and that would leave for places like California where they hoped that they would have more success. But my daddy was not one of those people. He felt that rain was eventually going to come, and so we waited it out. And uh, during that time, I did my two favorite things. I ate apples off of my ma's apple tree, which were amazing, and I played piano. See, my ma taught me how to play piano when I was young, and I instantly fell in love with it. I love the feelings of the keys, and I love the way that music told a story, and I just loved it. And um, Arlie Wanderdale, my music teacher, asked me if I wanted to perform every Wednesday at the Palace Theater, and it was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. Um, but then something not so wonderful happened. I... So one day, my daddy had left a can of kerosene by the stove. And while my mom was making coffee one morning, um, she mistaked the can of kerosene for water. And so instead of making coffee, she created a rope of fire. So she runs out screaming, and I go back into the house um, to get rid of the kerosene, uh, hoping that it won't burn down her house, and instead of throwing the kerosene just out the door, I, I didn't realize that my mom was standing outside the door, and I threw it on her, and I tried to get off the kerosene as fast as I could, um, but it burned her body bad. And it burned my hands as I was trying to get it off. So she went to go get treated, but when she got back, she, she didn't look like my mom anymore. Um, and so a few days later, she goes into labor with my brother and she dies right after having him, and then he dies a few moments after. And I gave him a name, though. I felt like my little brother deserved a name. So on top of a big hill, I, I decided to name him Franklin after the president. So... After the accident, my daddy and I didn't get along very well. I I was mad at him for leaving the kerosene there, and he was mad at me for throwing it out the door. And so we didn't talk, and I couldn't turn to music as a source of happiness because I couldn't even play the piano anymore. My hands are so swollen and full of pus that it hurt. So I ran away. I didn't know what else to do, and I, I took some biscuits with me, and I ran away. And I met a homeless, smelly man on a train who told me his story about leaving his wife and his children and having nothing. And I told him my story. And I woke up the next morning with the food gone, and in its place was a picture of his family that he left. And it was then that I decided that I wanted to go back home, and that running away from my challenges 
doesn't fix anything. And so my daddy met me at the train station the next day. And every step that we took out of that train station, I forgave him a little bit more, a little bit more. And he forgave me. And we went back home and I met a woman named Louise who apparently had been taking care of him all of this time. He had spots on his face um, that they thought were cancerous and so she had stayed with them caring for him and and from that love that I saw in them I, I felt like I could turn back to piano too. I, I felt like I felt like I could overcome that just like I had overcome the um, the challenge of forgiving my father and forgiving myself. So every day I was able to play the piano a little bit more and though although it hurt really hurt from the burns on my hands I I was able to play the piano and it brought me such joy. And so um I'm going to read you a a poem that I wrote um, on July, in July 1935, it's called The Dream. And every time that I wrote a poem that dealt with music, I, I varied the text to feel like it had a rhythmic quality, like music. So this one's called The Dream. Piano, my silent mother, I can touch you. You were cool and smooth and willing. To stay with me, stay with me, talk to me. Uncomplaining, you accept, you cover to your keys, and still, you make room for all that I place there. We close our eyes together, and together find that stillness like a pond, a pond, when the wind is quiet and the surface glazes, gazing unblinking at the blue sky. I play songs that have only the pattern of myself in them, and you hum along, supporting me. You are the companion to myself, the mirror with my mother's eyes. So, if you want to read a book about a girl who overcomes challenges and who learns that you can forgive someone no matter what has happened and that um, you can make good out of something, when you have that determination and that change of heart um, and that perseverance like Billy Joe had. So um, this book is great for fifth grade and um, as well as sixth grade. And so I encourage you to use it in your classroom. It's a fantastic book that you can look at um, for free verse poems as well um, and talk about uh, why these lines end the way that they do and the variation in that. So there's a lot of teaching points in this book and uh, I feel like it's a wonderful one to use in your classroom.